Hi, this is Jim Hodges of Heavy Reading, and today I'm with Jeff Peters from, from F5 Networks. Jeff, we recently completed some research looking at 5G security, and there's some really interesting takeaways from that. We're going to talk about a few of those today, but one of the things we talked about was, and we looked at, was sort of the, the requirement to use automated security policy for 5G launch. And when we looked at the numbers, about 47% said that they would launch 5G services or 5G security services only with some sort of automated security policies and some would, some would hire more staff, some wouldn't. Um, and the good news was only about 8% said they planned to actually go commercial launch and have using uh, manual pr processes for 5G security. Uh, so to me that's a really positive step. It shows kind of the value of automation. The service providers understand that and clearly have to work through the implementation. But is that kind of c consistent with some of the, you know, the insights you're hearing from your customers as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've seen our customers start to automate security several years ago as just to keep up with operational demands. But 5G brings a whole new set of elements, yeah. a whole new set of APIs, um, a whole new set of um, you know, with slicing and all these new architectures. There's a lot more things to secure. So I think providers are starting to realize that through automation, uh, they're going to be able to realize like more and more security, um, you know, more, more implementation of security. So. Okay. And that's going to drive a lot more, like you said, it has a lot of levels, of process level, tools, it's, it's all, it's a whole thing from a security perspective. That's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, there's a lot of things to consider when you're doing that from an automation perspective in exactly. terms of policy. Yeah, I mean you have like the, the humans who have to decide the logic of what things are, then you have the, the databases that are authoritative for IP addresses or systems or names, and then you need the, the, the processes to kind of glue all that together and the tools and the techniques to make sure that you can have authoritative information be put into a security policy and then have it also be able to respond back so when you detect threats you can feed it back into the network. So it's kind of the initial provisioning is important to automate but also real-time remediation and, and uh, interaction with the yeah. network. So the other thing that was interesting about the survey is when we talked about automation, it's not just in terms of the ability to use it for security policy but also the OPEX savings and we saw about I think about 40% of the, the respondents to the survey said that they could see sort of OPEX in the security reduction perspective from an OPEX spend of about 10 to 25%. So I think that's pretty significant that they see that there's a really significant opportunity for them to also not also automate those security processes and have better security uh, services, but also be able to reduce their, their costs by sort of 10 to 25%. And about 25, another 25% said it was almost like 25% or more. So, so it is a lot, but, but I think, in, and obviously it's automation is a bit of a long-term game in terms of how you implement it. But I think there are some real positives there in terms of just the, the sort of the OPEX savings potential of, of, of being able to use automation. Would you agree with that? Yep, absolutely. I mean, if you look at over the last several years where NFE has kind of taken automation to the forefront of networking, yeah. it's kind of the time for security to really get those same types of benefits. So I think we've seen benefits in networking and just setting up systems with, with NFE. And it's really natural to say, OK, we have all these new systems on, on security. Let's start automating things to really save some money. But also, I think some of that savings might free up some of the resources to kind of look at more advanced security threats or, or, or more difficult problems. So it's not, we're just going to make life easier. We kind of can make life easier, but also free up people to look at more more parts of the 5G architecture right. holistically. Yeah, and even if you can achieve those reductions, then you can actually you know, have more resources to deploy from a right. security perspective. And that's going to be, I think, another critical part. So basically, you know, so using some of those OPEX savings to sort of, you know, re-vector them towards security measures or security policies. I think that's an, an important part of this process as yeah. well. And, and, you know, if you looked at NFE, it took a lot of time up front to get those, those automation set up and things going. So I, I would say in the beginning, it's probably not a lot of savings, but over time, you'll really realize those benefits as the systems mature and everything gets set up in kind of more day-to-day -day operations. The other thing that was interesting in the uh, survey that we did with, with F5 um, was really looking at sort of slicing. I mean, slicing is kind of, uh, it's, it drives a lot in terms of security policies. Like, there's a lot of implications of slicing. We found about 25 to 30 percent, almost a third of the um, respondents said that they were actually going to invest in slicing before the commercial launch. Uh, and, that's, and that's probably about right, because some will launch with maybe a standalone core versus non-standalone. So that kind of makes sense. And then the other part we saw was about 30 to 40 percent would say they would, impl they would implement 5G and then they would Im invest in slicing right after. So, you know, a very small number said they had really no idea when they would actually invest in security investment for slicing, you know, in terms of monitoring the slice, in terms of managing life cycle, you know, applying policies to slices. So, so I think it's pretty positive that it does show that there is a lot of 
interest and demand for security services, but also for security-driven slices as well. you agree with that? Absolutely. We've seen our customers really start to put IoT systems onto the, the network. Um, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot more devices. Enterprises are moving a lot of their connectivity towards service provider infrastructure. And if, if you look at today's 4G infrastructure, there's a lot of systems out there that are sl implement slicing type capabilities in a more customized way. So I can see how providers want to migrate to a more standardized way of doing things. And then also, you know, you want to get your 5G network up and running first before you start to implement some of the more advanced features. And then once you have these, you can start to monetize your network by you know, selling security services on these slices. Right. So it, I, it's a natural progression to kind of get the network up, get slicing going, and then start monetizing it. And it was interesting, when we looked at that, when we, in the, in the survey we did, we kind of broke it down slicing into a number of different things in terms of like managing slices, applying policies. So it's not, just a manage, uh, it's not just a matter of just taking slicing and saying we're going to secure it. There's a lot of different moving parts in terms of the life cycle of them, the applications running inside them. So you have to be service aware because it's service aware. So there's a lot of, not complexity, but a lot of considerations that has to be done with that. So I, I'm kind of encouraged by the fact that service providers understand that and they're either going to make the investment up front or they're going to do it right after commercial launch. So. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really nice to see them start to bake security in up front. Right? I mean, a lot of these slices are going to have APIs to set them up and exactly, change yeah. them. They'll have security yeah. in the slice. Uh, you can have monitoring of the slice. So, I mean, there's a lot of like, ideas floating around on, um, to really do this properly this time, which is nice. Okay, so as I said, I think the research was really interesting. Kind of gives a really good view of where we are with you know, slicing, automation, OPEX same. So I think it uh, provides, I think, a lot of positives. There's a lot of things to, for the industry to, to, to capitalize on as we move forward to commercialize, uh, uh, commercialize 5G in, in a security context. Yeah. Oh, it's excellent research. I would say it gives a really nice insight into the early days of 5G and uh, look forward to seeing, how, seeing similar results in several years in the future and kind of seeing how the world yeah, yeah, evolves. Exactly, yeah. Okay, well, thanks for joining us today, Jeff. Well, thank you very much.